This lecture has been made available to you courtesy of the American Numismatic Society. Welcome everyone, our in-person visitors and our online crowd. It is my pleasure to introduce our speakers for this evening's lecture on barbarian imitations and copies of Roman imperial denarii. Uh, one of the more innovative and developing areas of research in the last decade or so is the study of coin finds and imitations from beyond Rome's borders, the so-called barbaricum. And if you go through the last survey of numismatic research, you'll find an extensive bibliography of recent work on the topic. And among the prominent names of scholars you find contributing to this new exciting area of research, you will see particularly Arcadius Domowski and Carol Mizgin among them. Dr. Arcadius Domowski received his first PhD in archaeology in 2010 and his habilitation in 2018 from the University of Warsaw. His second PhD, which I think in Germany makes you doctor, doctor, um, <laughs> in history from 2016 is from the University of Gdansk. His research focuses on ancient coin finds from Central and Eastern Europe and their value as archaeological sources. He is especially interested in problems of inflow, redistribution, and use of Roman coins east of the Rhine and north of the Danube during the pre-Roman Roman and migration periods. He has published three bu books and more than 70 articles and reviews. And since 2012, he has participated in collaborative research projects undertaken through the University of Warsaw and from 2014 to 2020. He led two projects, Coins of the Roman Republic in Central Europe and Use of Ancient Coins in East Central Europe in the Middle Ages and the Modern Period. In 2019, he began a new project addressing the use and manufacture of counterfeit Roman coins in the Barbaricum. Dr. Carrillo Mizgin is currently an assistant professor at the Faculty of Archaeology at the University of Warsaw. In 2010, he defended his PhD thesis at the Institute of Archaeology at the National Academy of Science of Ukraine and received his habilitation in 2023 at the Faculty of Archaeology at the University of Warsaw. The main areas of his research interests are ancient coin finds in the territory of Central and Eastern Europe, as well as the archaeology of the late Roman period and the early Great Migration period in this region. He was a research fellow of the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation, Wolfson College uh, of the Oxford University, and a Dumbarton Oaks Summer Fellow. And with that, I'll hand it over to Dr. Damaski. Uh, thank you very much for inviting us. Uh, I hope our uh, presentation on barbarian imitations and copies of Roman Imperial Denarii would be uh, interesting for you. Uh, Kirlo Mizgin should be here uh, personally, but uh, unfortunately he couldn't uh, come to the US uh, I'm very sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, okay, I, I think I can change slides now. Uh, so, uh, at the beginning, uh, I would like to present you a definition of uh, barbarian imitation of Roman imperial uh, coins. Uh, it was worked out uh, during the MAGMA project, uh, which was conducted uh, at the University of Warsaw and uh, Deutsches Archaeologisches Institute. Uh, so, barbarian imitations of Roman imperial coins are coins or coin-like objects modeled on Roman imperial or provincial coins or inspired by them, made by barbarians in continental Europe, excluding post-Roman mintic activity. So, uh, first, sorry, it doesn't work. Ah, first, I will tell you uh, a bit about imitations on, uh, of Roman denarii of the Nerva Antonine uh, dynasty, which is uh, of our interest. Uh, here you can find some examples of uh, this kind of imitations. Uh, some of them are modeled after one 
uh, Roman original coins. Uh, some of them are hybrids, so uh, one side is uh, modeled after one coin, uh, the other side is modeled after uh, another coin, but barbarians used something that we call piece punches. So it is possible that an obverse or a reverse uh, was modeled after more than one uh, original Roman imperial coins. So for example, uh, imperial portrait uh, was taken from one coin and uh, a legend or a part of a legend was taken from uh, another coins. Uh, so it is pointless to search for uh, one prototype, at least in some cases. Uh, as you can see, some of these coins uh, have been struck from dice uh, which, were ma which were made uh, using the technique of uh, Mm, uh, sorry, uh, they uh, were made by, some of them were made by uh, hand and uh, another was, uh, was uh, were made uh, using uh, transferring, uh, mechanical transferring dice uh, from original uh, coins. Uh, of course, a great increase of uh, information on uh, imitations on R of Roman imperial coins was possible thanks to work of uh, Oleg Anohin, an Ukrainian uh, numismatics who gathered a lot of information on uh, Roman uh, of imitations of Roman imperial coins found in Ukraine and in Moldova. Uh, he gathered information of uh, on about uh, 5,000 uh, coins, so this is a great amount of, of new information. Uh, and now a few uh, information about dating barbarian imitations of Roman coins. Uh, as you know, uh, a lot of objects have been found in uh, Bok box in uh, Jutland, uh, in Illerup Adal, for example. Uh, some of these objects were coins, and among these coins there were four imitations of Roman imperial denarii. Uh, they were struck using the same uh, dice. And the latest dendro date uh, of the Illerup Adal uh, objects is uh, AD 205, so this is a terminus post quem of uh, production of uh, the earliest imitations of Roman coins we know for now. Uh, thanks to uh, numismatical uh, analysis, uh, we know that some reverses of Roman imperial denarii, of uh, imitations of Roman imperial denarii, uh, have been modeled uh, after. Uh, third century issues, especially isu issues from uh, 220s and the 230s. Uh, so this means that at least some imitations were made uh, in the beginning of the third century AD. And we know some dialings between uh, imitations of Roman imperial denarii and imitations of uh, late Roman array dated to the turn of the third century. So uh, we know that at least some of these imitations of Roman imperial denarii were made uh, not earliest than uh, at the turn of the third century. Uh, here you can see the territorial distribution of finds of Roman imperial, of imitations of Roman imperial uh, denarii in Barbaricum, so beyond the Roman limes. Uh, blue uh, triangles means, mean uh, hordes of uh, Roman imperial denarii containing imitations. Uh, 
uh, red dots mean uh, finds uh, uh, with uh, certain uh, localization and uh, red circles mean uh, finds of uh, unknown precise location of uh, finding. Uh, you can see almost all of these finds, or most of them, uh, are located in the territory of present-day Ukraine and uh, Moldova, which means they should be connected with uh, the Chernyakhov archaeological cultures, which is connected uh, to mixed societies controlled most probably by uh, gods. Uh, and the Chernyakhov archaeological culture is dated from the mid-third century, and that means that imitations of Roman imperial denarii should be dated uh, no earlier than to the mid-third century AD till mid-fifth century uh, AD. Uh, we know five regions of concentration of finds of uh, imitations of Roman imperial Denari, one of them is uh, northern Germany, uh, another one Poland, uh, eastern Hungary, uh, the islands uh, on the Baltic Sea, and uh, of course uh, the most important concentration is present-day Ukraine and uh, Moldova. Uh, and before I will take. I will tell you something more about uh, Roman imitations, about imitations of Roman uh, denarii uh, themselves. I will take. Uh, I will tell you uh, some something about uh, imperial denarius hordes uh, found in uh, Barbaricum. For now, we know over 500 uh, imperial denarius hordes. Uh, as you can see, they are spread over uh, the whole territory of uh, Barbaricum from uh, the Rhine to Western Russia and from uh, the Danube to uh, Scandinavia. Uh, they contain uh, coins from Nero to Septimius uh, Severus, some of them end with coins of uh, Hadrian, some of them ends with coins of Antoninus Pius, some of them of Marcus Aurelius or Commodus, but m as a rule, most of them start with coins of uh, Nero and end with coins of uh, Septimius Severus. And they had a few typical uh, chronological patterns. Uh, type B, let's say, uh, the earliest chronological pattern, uh, then type C, later chronological, pattern and type D, the latest uh, chronological uh, pattern. What is important that uh, imitations of Roman imperial denarii are being found uh, in most cases in uh, denarius holds of type D, so of the latest uh, chronological pattern. And uh, here you can see the map of distribution of uh, hordes containing uh, imitations of Roman imperial denarii. Uh, in all cases, uh, imitations are very minor admixture to original uh, imperial denarii. Let's say a few coins in a hoard containing 1,000 coins or something like this, so, so very few coins, uh, imitative coins, can be found in these hordes. Uh, and what is important, uh, in some cases, hordes containing uh, imitations of Roman imperial denarii uh, contain uh, some objects too, uh, non-monetary objects, and these objects uh, very often are dated very late. So, for example, hold from Alekshitsi in Belarus, uh, and uh, these uh, objects 
uh, from uh, this halt uh, are dated to the turn of the uh, fourth uh, century. A horde from Melniki in Ukraine, uh, also objects from this horde are dated very late to late fourth or mid to mid fifth uh, century AD. Horde from uh, Pimenovo in Western Russia. Uh, these objects were dated, are dated to the first quarter of the fifth century AD, so very late. Uh, Hold from the Krocice Okupne in Poland. Uh, objects uh, from this hold are dated to late fourth or early fifth century. And uh, finally, the Hogran Hold from Gotland. Uh, these objects you can see uh, on the slide are dated very late to late 5th or early 6th century. So uh, we can say that the context of uh, imitations of Roman imperial denarii usually is late or very late. So they were in use uh, most probably from the mid 3rd century uh, until early 6th century uh, AD. And a few words about dialings of uh, imitations of Roman imperial denarii. Uh, we can distinguish a few die chains called groups. The first, the first group uh, called uh, the Salus Augusti group was uh, described by Karl Horst Stribern Stribernne in 2003. Uh, he knew uh, coins from uh, northwestern Germany, from Poland and from Hungary. Now we know that uh, some coins of this group uh, came from Ukrainian uh, finds uh, too. Uh, here you can see the distribution of uh, coins of the Salus Augusti group, uh, so northwestern Germany, Poland, uh, western Ukraine and eastern uh, Hungary. Another group uh, described, for, uh, described by uh, Leonard Lind uh, initially in 1988. Uh, he called it uh, Hulterstadt Ugarda group, uh, what was taken from uh, places of find in, in Sweden, on Gotland especially. Uh, now we know that uh, many of coins of this group uh, were found in Ukraine too. Here you can see uh, the territorial distribution of uh, the coins of the Hulterstadt Ugarda group. Uh, so Gotland, Holland, uh, Eastern uh, Hungary and a lot of finds in present-day Ukraine. Another group, the Ceres group, uh, Leonard Lin calls it uh, Ceres Mulde group. Uh, these coins uh, can be found in old collection, for example, collections, for example, in the British Museum collection, you can find uh, coins of this uh, group, what is very uh, interesting. Uh, on this slide you can see a die chain of this uh, group uh, and some, some examples from hordes in uh, Ukraine, on Gotland in U uh, in and in uh, Poland that, I, that are uh, die linked. And here you can see the distribution map of uh, finds of uh, imitations of Roman imperial denarii from the Ceres group, uh, Gotland, Poland, and uh, Western and Central Ukraine. Uh, and here are some uh, small finds too of the, the same group. Uh, another group uh, described a few years ago, the Venus Victrix group, uh, here you can see a coin from the Ketzel Hort in Hungary and uh, from the Inowrocław Hort in, in Poland. The group is much 
larger. As you can see, uh, there are many dialings within this group. Uh, what is interesting within this group is a coin that uh, mm, both, size, both sides of, uh, of it uh, have been uh, modeled on obverses of original Roman uh, coins. This is the coin in the middle uh, at the top. It's uh, very unusual. Uh, and map of uh, distribution, of territorial distribution of the Venus Victories groups. So Poland, Eastern, Hungary, and uh, a lot of finds from Ukraine. Uh, coins of these four groups were struck in fine silver. And uh, they, mm, in most cases, they are admixture to uh, Roman imperial denarius hordes in, in Barbaricum. And we can find die links between every two regions of uh, finds of uh, imitations of Roman imperial denarius. So we can find die links uh, of, mm, within these four groups. I was talking about uh, a moment ago. Uh, so between Scandinavia, Germany, between Germany, Poland, between Ukraine, uh, Eastern Hungary, and so on. Between every uh, of two of these uh, regions. And what is important, this uh, is about coins struck in fine silver. Uh, there are two other groups huge uh, honor group uh, over uh, 100 dice have been identified till uh, now uh, and uh, this group contains uh, coins uh, that have been found only in Ukraine and in uh, Moldova. The name of this group is after uh, the peace punch, peace punch Onav uh, as you can see on, th on the reverse of, uh, of this coin, uh, you can see uh, Peace Punch, Peace Punch Onaf uh, struck six times. Uh, and wha what, what does it mean Onaf? This is a part of uh, an obverse legend of uh, a denarius of uh, Commodus. Commodus Anton Augustus. So, so they, they took a part of this legend and, and multiplied, multiplied it. Uh, most of denarii within this uh, ONAV group are uh, plated denarii, suberati. And uh, perhaps this is the reason why they, they, are, they don't occur in finds uh, in regions different than Ukraine and Moldova. And uh, within this group, we can find imitations of array. Uh, some of them are imitations of uh, coins dated to second century, the second century. Some of them uh, are uh, modeled after coins, uh, original coins struck uh, in the turn of the third century, so very late. Uh, as I told you, as I told you before, uh, all of finds of uh, coins of the Onav group uh, have been found uh, in Ukraine and Moldova. One piece uh, have been found uh, in w in eastern Romania. And another group, uh, very similar to the to the Onav group, the NNN group, uh, also contain uh, suberati, plated denarii, and imitations uh, in gold. Why NNN group? Because of barbarized legend uh, multiplying uh, Latin letters, NNN, SSS, GG, et, et cetera. Uh, as and uh, territorial distribution of the uh, coins of the NNN group, as I told you before, only Ukraine and uh, Moldova. So coins uh, from 
die chains containing uh, counterfeit denarii are being found only uh, in Eastern uh, Europe, only in Ukraine and uh, Moldova. There are no coins of uh, these uh, groups in Germany, in Poland, in Scandinavia or uh, in Hungary or uh, anywhere else. And now uh, we will turn to copies of uh, Roman imperial coins. Okay, dear colleagues, uh, I hope you heard me well. Uh, so indeed, now I will turn to another barbarian uh, production copies of Denari. And uh, uh, first, we would like to emphasize the difference between an imitation and a copy. Sometimes I I, I, I need to underline it. Uh, sometimes they are confused and a copy sometimes is called an imitation and vice versa, but it's it's uh, uh, fell. Uh, so a copy of a coin is an exact reproduction of the original coin, but unofficial means such as casting or plating. So uh, now we would like to talk about cast copies. Uh, in publications or in the auctions, uh, we can meet many variations of terms to describe cast copy, copies of denarii. The most popular uh, of the terms, uh, what we uh, can uh, meet in the publication, the scientific publication is cast uh, denarii or cast copies of denarii. Uh, another last, uh, less popular term uh, are false denarii or cast forgeries of Roman denarii or unofficial denarii, etc. However, uh, the most popular term is limis falsa or limis denarius. Uh, actually, Wilhelm Kubitschek, uh, uh, an uh, Austrian numismatist uh, of the uh, beginning of the uh, 12th uh, century, um, who first used the term limis falsa in 1921, was pretty clear about it only the cast copies of bronze imperial coins in excluding provincial uh, provincial issues can be called like a limus falsa so but in this way using term for cast copies of denarii which were produced one and a half thousand kilometer from the limus is absolutely for our opinion miserable for our opinion, to cast counterfeit denarii, the past participle of the verb flo, flare, flavi, flatum, that can be exactly fitting for the phenomenon. The participle is well attested in Roman literary sources concerning coin production in the pre denarius uh, period, like in the Terentius Varro or Aulus Gellius. Uh, the term Flando uh, is also used on coin legend, like Triumviri, Auro, Argento, Aere, Flando, uh, Feriundo. Uh, so for our opinion, the term Denarii Flati corresponds well to the use of the participle other grammatical forms in, in ancient Roman text. As you know, mass terms that modern numismatists use to describe various types of Roman coins are from Latin, for example, bigati, quadrigati, victoriati, binio, uh, or more uh, more modern uh, terms uh, like Antoniniani, uh, siliqua, suberati, etc. Moreover, it seems to be much more practical because it does not indicate uh, whether we are dealing with counterfeit coins or rather with official or semi-official issues of local Roman means. Thus, uh, we are proposed that the cast copy of denarii be called denarii flati. This could also be applied to Antoniniani flati and possibly to other categories of forged Roman coins made by uh, casting. And this term, uh, denarii flati, uh, 
becoming more and more and more popular popular in the uh, uh, at least uh, central and eastern european numismatist the numismatic of barbaricum the study of the narrow flatty phenomenon has only just begun uh, Today, the most significant number of production traces can be seen on the uh, Chernihiv culture territory, at least five uh, workshops, uh, but these coins are known in almost all parts of the Barbaricum from Scandinavia uh, uh, and the Rhine area to the Black Sea and the Volga region. Unfortunately, all of these workshops from Ukraine by treasure hunters have been documented and none have yet been investigated archaeologically. And now the research is not possible because of the war, uh, but we hope that such an opportunity will come. Uh, on one of the critical roles in the study of the Nari Flati is the study of their metal composition. Sometimes it is because of the composition of the metal that we can tell that this is a cast copy. For example, when a coin that looks like a denarius has not even a percent of silver in it. This is precisely the most characteristic of the most massive uh, group of denarii flat made of copper and uh, tin based alloys. Here, just an example from Abrikosivka workshop, you can see, and uh, tin and from uh, Supruti uh, in uh, Russia, uh, the combination of copper and tin gave the coins a grey or silvery, silvery color, uh, which could deceive the recipient into believing that the coin was original. But there are some really amazing pieces. The, there are denari flati made of good quality silver. At least two ancient workshops for making such coins are known. One of the western Ukraine, it's a Korzhivtsi workshop, and other uh, very, very shortly parted and uh, uh, partly uh, published by David Twigwolf uh, in uh, in Ragut, in uh, Mecklenburg for, for Pommern in the north uh, Germany. Uh, so far, it has been possible to reconstruct several techniques used by barbarian craftsmen to make denarii flati. Large, uh, large quantities of production remnants and semi-finished coins indicating that the coin tree technique was the most widespread, so uh, it's not necessary to... Um, uh, so talking about uh, more about the coin tree techniques, I think the, uh, all of you are very familiar for such uh, technique. It's very very common technique in the ancient times. Another technique is uh, coin casting in moods. Uh, one such broad mould for making denarii uh, denarii flatty uh, was found in uh, yeah uh, exactly that uh, was found in northwestern Ukraine it's Simoniv in the Rimne district in northwest Ukraine uh, with uh, uh, here you see the bronze mold and uh, possible prototype it's pro probably it's it's uh, 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 denarius of Antoninus, Antoninus uh, Pius. Uh, um, actually, it, it is difficult to say uh, whether it was used as a matrix for making coins or as a patrix for making moves for subsequent uh, uh, casting. Uh, anyway, uh, however, uh, it must be said that uh, this uh, technique was prevalent through, throughout the empire and a hundred of Thousands of clay molds for casting counterfeit coins are known. Nevertheless, I am as yet unaware of any finds of such clay molds in Barbaricum. Any finds? We have really no, uh, uh, probably just one find uh, from uh, Scotland. Uh, uh, which uh, probably uh, came from the territory of Britain. Uh, but in the other party, uh, part uh, of Barbaricum where such products uh, uh, were, were uh, uh, common, uh, no finds of such clay molds. So it appears a very logical question. Why? Uh, so in my opinion, 
perhaps the molds were made not of clay but of wax or similar material which has not survived so in other words, words the last wax technique was used in my opinion the mass production of denarii flati in barbaricum began uh, the same like uh, with production of uh, imitations of denarii what uh, arek talked about uh, in the mid second half of the third century however there's no data yet <laughs> on how long it lasted the technology of products producing uh, such coins had likely penetrated the barbarian society from the roman provinces for example by wandering craftsmen or by craftsmen taken a prisoner for example during the campaigns of gods against the roman provinces of course the main reason for the production of denarii flati could be the lack of original denarii it's logical i think uh, i believe uh, that manufacture of denarii flati within the barbaricum was on two levels one level was initiated by the elites to make up for the lack of original coins with their high-grade silver copies and the second level involved private uh, initiative prompted by the entrepreneur spirit of individual counterfeits or those who commissioned their goods and this include the production of denarii flatty from copper and tin based alloys so that was about the denarii flatty what the next in our study here we're talking about copies what i talked about uh, the first result of our study of these uh, products in the Barbaricum will be published uh, in Brepo's publishing house in the volume uh, included in uh, our with uh, Arek uh, Demovsky. Uh, so it will be uh, uh, absolutely open access. Uh, uh, so uh, just following uh, following the, uh, some updates uh, on the uh, and some news on the Faculty of Archaeology of University of Warsaw. But what about the imitation? In recent years, we have seen in uh, some intensific intensification in the study of other imitations of ancient co coins, Celtic coins. An example of this is a series of catalogues of Celtic starters uh, by our French colleagues. A logical development of these studies is the emergence of ideas for creating online catalogues of Celtic coinage. Uh, as far as we know, uh, the American Numismatic Society is also involved in uh, uh, one of such I uh, idea. Uh, I mean, online Celtic coinage. Another project is idea of of the uh, our uh, from the our uh, German colleagues from Deutsche Archäologische Institute uh, for creating catalog of online Celtic uh, coinage. Uh, there are now uh, quite a few other examples of successful experience in cataloging big data, data on coin files or coin types. And uh, one uh, of such very good example uh, is Corpus Numorum. At the same time, uh, at the University of Warsaw, there is a huge amount of information on the findings of imitations. This applies both to the imitations of denarii, which have, uh, which we have discussed today, and of course gold and gold-plated imitations, to which a separate lecture could be devoted. As well I, as I know, a uh, lot of such uh, imitations also stored in the American Numismatic uh, Society collection. However, as there is a particular paradox. Today, only one database of barbarian imitations of Roman coins exists. This, this database exists on a free hosting website, looking very simple and in Russian. So it's impossible to use it uh, by not Russian speakers uh, or non-Slavonic speakers, uh, uh, scientists or, or, or just numismatists. 
So that is why we had an idea for creating a database, uh, Corpus Numorum Barbarorum, uh, uh, um, International Numismatic uh, Council positively perceived this idea. Uh, it was it was discussed by uh, Professor Alexander Busch, and uh, it is actu actually this uh, idea and uh, and this uh, future database under uh, its patronage. Nevertheless, the idea remains an idea, unfortunately, <laughs> for now, and. We are looking for partners, perhaps colleagues uh, from American Numismatic Society would be interested in cooperation. It seems to us uh, that it will, would be very logical to build such a database using the Nomisma org language. Uh, and uh, of course, we know that, that perhaps this would require work on the ontology of imitations. In any case, this could be a subject for further interesting discussion. Thank you very much. So I want to thank our speakers for that very interesting uh, lecture on a topic we don't often hear a lot about, but which there, of course, is a great amount of new and emerging research. And uh, as I mentioned during the introduction, uh, a, a continually growing bibliography and it's interesting also to hear about your plans for an online database so uh, sounds like something we should all think about and talk about in the future as well um, I think maybe the best way to proceed now with the questions is uh, we'll see what questions we have in the room and then turn it over to our online audience um, to start us off I have a question about uh, the the um, the function of these imitations. You had mentioned that with the cast imitations, they seem to uh, respond to a shortage of denarii. So uh, I guess they have an economic function, but is this also the case with uh, the struck denarii? Do they seem also to have kind of replacement uh, for lack of available currency? And with the gold coins, you often also have that piercing on them. So does that represent a, a different kind of function? Mm. OK, I will answer. Uh, so I think we should distinguish between coins struck uh, or cast in fine silver and coins uh, that were no, not uh, cast or struck in silver. So plated coins or uh, denarii flat made of uh, tin-based uh, bronze alloy. Uh, and in the first case, they were made because of shortage of uh, original silver denarii. And in second case, we think they were just uh, counterfeits. And uh, as regards imitations, uh, in gold or golden plated, it seems that they were uh, made uh, as ornaments from the beginning. Because some of them had uh, loops uh, made during uh, the production uh, process at the beginning. Thank you. Actually, actually, uh, if I if I might uh, to add uh, something, uh, actually uh, the function uh, the function of um, silver imitation uh, or silver plated imitation, uh, I don't know uh, if you agree with me, Arek, <laughs> uh, but uh, it's still still unclear why why they. Uh, needed uh, to create something such difficult. I mean, the creating a new new dice, uh, transferring a part of dice from coins. If they uh, just uh, just uh, can uh, made made coin in the made a copy of coin. So. Uh, that's 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 a that's a really big big question 
so it's it's uh, still a bit unclear uh, unclear for us okay for uh, as for uh, cast uh, uh, copies ordinary floppy yes it's it's uh, it's obviously it's it's a short, sh shortage of uh, of the life of the coins but but uh, but what about the but of the, uh, i'm unsure that the same reason for the silver and silver plated uh, imitations uh it's i think it's a for further uh further uh discussions thank you uh are there any other questions in the room lucia yes uh, we already briefly discussed this uh last week uh what i find and incredibly interesting is the fact that you have uh, all these stylings, at least uh, among some of these imitations, uh, because this means a very, very well organized effort with a huge workshop. And uh, but I see that not all these groups have uh, these stylings, so I don't know if uh, uh, they have all been. You know, just because nobody has done a dye study yet, because as I was telling you, we were discussing last time. For example, our thing is that uh, uh, for the uh, imitation of Republican time, the Dagojetan ones, which are a huge phenomenon there too, but there are almost no known dye links. So it's a very different phenomenon. So what is the explanation for that? What's or do you think uh, uh, who organized these workshops where all of them controlled in some way by local chieftains? I mean, what, mm -hmm. what, yes, how do you make this? We don't know, but uh, as you said, uh, the production have to be, uh, has to be controlled by, by someone because uh, mm, the production was on mass scale. Uh, and there are some dye chains uh, that not have been described yet. So they are waiting for uh, describing publication. Uh, in some cases uh, I wait for links because I can see, uh, for example, two dye chains uh, of similar style and most probably there are uh, from the same workshop, but uh, I can't uh, indicate uh, a link mm, for now. So, so that's why I, I'm waiting for, for link to publish all the whole die chain, which uh, most probably uh, will be huge. And uh, and uh, I <laughs> I would like to add uh, uh, that uh, actually for for uh, for second part of your question about who controlled it, <laughs> uh, uh, I mean uh, you you ask about the historical uh, historical level of the phen phenomena, and actually it's a really big tragedy of uh, this uh, coins coin finds. Uh, I mean, Denari Flati and uh, uh, silver imitations and gold imitations, that 99% of them uh, were found by treasure hunters. And unfortunately, we uh, have not information about a, a precise uh, archaeological context. So, uh, uh, for one percent uh, of uh, such coins, we have archaeological context of it's it's enough to uh, to connect in uh, with Chernihov or uh, culture or uh, or in other words uh, words uh, with a, a, a Gothic tribes, uh, but probably uh, probably of uh, such of. Uh, 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 spreading of uh, of uh, such groups 
are uh, connecting with the uh, with the activity of uh, different different tribes in the uh, in, uh, or different part of the Chernihiv society, uh, or probably it was uh, just uh, just uh, uh, somehow. Uh, 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 a business you you know it's it's a, it's a just order order from uh, order uh, it was related with the order from uh, some elites from scandinavia on uh, living in scandinavia on germany so uh, i think we are uh, in a very beginning uh, of uh, this actually the studying of this uh, phenomena i mean i mean the historical level of this phenomena thank you We have one more question in the room, and then I think we'll move to the online group. Hello. Uh, if I'm understanding this correctly, um, you mentioned that at least in the Ukrainian region, that the earliest um, that these coins, the imitations were created, was the mid third century. But yes. They're all imitating coins of the first and second century. Could you speak to that? Yes, exactly. Uh, because of the archaeological context of the Chernyakhiv culture, we have to date this phenomena to uh, mid third century or uh, later. And they uh, imitated coins uh, in most cases of the Nerva uh, Antonine uh, dynasty, because they were in uh, common use in Barbaricum. Uh, in the Roman, within the Roman Empire, uh, coins uh, struck in 3rd century were in use too, but uh, the inflow of uh, denarii uh, of the 3rd uh, century, struck in the 3rd century, uh, inflow to the barbaricum of these kind of coins were uh, very small. So uh, in barbaricum we've got uh, plenty of uh, first and second century denarii, and very few uh, third uh, century denarii. So they imitated what they have. Which were coins of previous centuries. Yes. Thank you. Okay, I think we have one more question in the room, and then we'll switch to the online. Crowd. So you might have just <coughs> answered this, but if I understood correctly, it seemed like there was maybe a preference for the Venus Victrix figure on a lot of these coins. And is this just a function of uh, what was circulating in like, the Roman Empire when they were adopting these coins and they were coming kind of into those areas? Or is there some other kind of pressure consideration that caused them to kind of go with these specific coins to imitate as opposed to something else? You mean some specific representations on coins? Mm -hmm. uh, it seems that uh, the only specific representation uh, that uh, we can talk about is uh, a birded portrait of an emperor. Uh, any other representations are random. And uh, what uh, is important uh, in almost all cases uh, there is a, uh, there is an imperial portrait uh, on one side and uh, mm, some deity or other uh, representation uh, typical for uh, uh, reverses of the Roman denarii on the other side. And uh, everything uh, other is completely mixed. like to invite uh, our online attendees uh, to unmute themselves if they have questions. Um, uh, I see there's one in the chat. Um, I, I guess I'll just read it, but again, I'd invite everyone just to unmute themselves and ask their question directly. The one in the chat reads, uh, it seems that imitation denarii of full silver circulated at the same time as Roman denarii of 50% silver or less. Do you have a comment? Uh, yes, uh, but uh, this regards to the territory of the Roman Empire. Uh, 
uh, exactly in uh, third century in the Roman Empire, uh, coins contained less than uh, fifty percent of silver. Uh, but, but as uh, I told you a moment ago, uh, very few of these coins uh, came to uh, the territory of Barbaricum. So in Barbaricum, uh, a lot of uh, good quality silver coins were in use from uh, about uh, mid second century uh, till the turn of the fifth century. So they were in use for very long time, much longer than uh, in the territory of the Roman Empire. So in the territory of uh, the Roman Empire, uh, they uh, went out of use uh, in uh, mid third century, and they were still uh, in use for a uh, few hundred years in uh, Barbaricum. Do we have any more questions from the uh, online attendees? Or any from the in-person attendees? Yes. Uh, if there was um, good silver imitation circulating outside of the Roman Empire, do we find though that those coins made their way into the Roman Empire to start to kind of, or were hoarded to kind of offset the debasement, or did they stay outside of the Roman Empire um, for the most part? There are very similar imitations uh, found within the Roman Empire, but we can't find any dialings between coins found within the Roman Empire and uh, outside its borders. So perhaps these imitations were uh, struck somewhere within the Roman Empire as, as imitations, as forgeries or uh, anything. Uh, if we could find uh, a dialing between a coin found, uh, an, an imitative coin found within uh, the empire and beyond its borders, it would be great. But I think it's it impossible, <laughs> but we'll see. <laughs> I saw uh, a coin found within a hoard from Wales, uh, which seems to be very typical for Barbaricum, but uh, there are do no dialings between this coin and uh, coins found uh, anywhere else. But actually, uh, actually, the uh, it was it was one case when uh, when uh, probably probably. Mm, the imitations, uh, pure gold imitations uh, of gold imitations, uh, struck with the same dice, uh, uh, a paradise. Uh, then, then in Chernihiv culture, were were found uh, nearby Karnuntum. But it's, uh, I don't know, uh, it, it's it's a questionable. Uh, uh, finds uh, it's a riser, riser, uh, uh, small reliable uh, find uh, actually, uh, but because because it's it's a long story. Uh, Christian uh, Professor Christian Gazdek uh, published it uh, this this coins and his uh, his catalog. Uh, so uh, as far as I know, uh, there's just just one one case of a uh, find of uh, the barbarian imitation barbarian imitation in the in the territory of uh, uh, empire just on the border in Karnum. yeah yeah just just on the border so it's 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 possible actually it's possible uh logically it's possible because barbarians uh, uh many times uh spent uh, in the in the in the roman and uh, empire like like foderati so they can took uh, uh, of course uh, such coins uh, with them to to the territory to, to the territory of uh, of empire why not uh, so uh, uh, on the on the other hand uh, we have one 
uh, gold imitation, uh, which uh, was uh, uh, struck with a die, uh, with a with a die, where on the on the reverse uh, was legend percussio viminatio. It's mean minted in viminatium. So probably, probably even some. Uh, uh, workshops in Viminatium even uh, produced some imitations for uh, uh, for uh, barbarians. Of course, it's a fantastic, fantastic idea. Where uh, we got this investigations five or oh, six years ago, and we are waiting uh, this article uh, in Heidelberg vol volume. And so uh, probably it will be published. Uh, uh next year or next 10 year uh, i don't know <laughs> so but but it's it's possible okay are there any final questions online or here in the room all right i want to thank our speakers for giving thank us you. this very rich lecture today and thank you all for joining us we really appreciate it thank you Thank you. Thank you very much.